issues with invisible symptoms are that patients are oftentimes not supported. So the doctor is not asking about the question and the patient's family is not aware that these are significant issues. For instance, if you tell someone I'm overwhelmingly fatigued and I feel perfect, you don't look abnormal. Is it real? Are you just making it up? Are you trying to get sympathy? So that's one of the issues. But once you recognize that fatigue and depression are really significant symptoms and they impact their ability to work and be members of their family and have productive lives, they're very actually easy to treat with a multitude of steps. The first is finding out what the issue is. The second is pharmacologically finding the appropriate therapy. And we now have really good treatments for uh, MS fatigue. Uh, ranging the spectrum from Ritalin to Modafinil. Um, but the other piece that a lot of doctors uh, don't realize is that simple exercise, endurance training, is a big piece that will help patients um, feel better, have more energy. And the problem is with MS, people don't want to exercise because as soon as they get overheated, some of their symptoms recur. But if they stay internally cool and they start slow, it's very successful. And depression can be managed in much the same way. Number one, you'd use pharmacological therapy. And they're very receptive, and it's very easy actually to treat MS depression. The second piece is exercise. Um, it's really, really important because we don't even know what some of these endogenous opiates do. But I have found that people can often successfully come off pharmacological therapy once they become more endurance trained. We use diet, a modified pillothic diet, uh, meditative practice and strength training to treat people with progressive MS who have fatigue and depression. Uh, and we so far find that people can uh, adapt uh, this complex multimodal regimen and we've seen terrific success. So uh, diet and lifestyle will be the key to treating fatigue. The first step in uh, trying to uh, manage these conditions um, is to recognize them and to ask your patients about them because they might not volunteer. Uh, the, the, the second caveat is to recognize that a lot of these things are common not in MS patients and uh, just because someone with MS has pain doesn't mean that multiple sclerosis is necessarily the cause. I've definitely seen patients uh, are, are fatigued. They could be hypothyroid or anemic. So um, just to, to not attribute automatically everything to MS. I've seen patients treated for MS relapse with, with pain or something like that. And it turns out they had fallen and broken a hip. So uh, don't forget general medicine uh, as well. With all of these invisible symptoms, it's very common for patients to be on a medication to put them to sleep, a medication to wake them up, a medication uh, to control stiffness, a medication to control pain, a medication to help their bladder. Um, and to be very wary of polypharmacy. Uh, be wary of when mo one medication may cause uh, one of the symptoms that you're trying to alleviate.